that uh, here now so I can quote you where it is. One sec, one sec, I'll get to it. So I'm a bit slow here. Okay. Section 3-4012. Okay. Section 3-401 brackets 2 of the Uniform Commercial Code defines signature. Remembering in order to create the second bond, most important for the Federal Reserve, they have to permit the splotching of blood of the baby onto the birth record or the stamping of its feet so that the UCC does not prevent, in fact, uh, uh, permits a signature in blood. It doesn't say it, but it implies it. So don't feel that when you send it through that uh, they can get you on health. You merely have to quote section 3-401 brackets 2 to say, hey, you're actually breaking the UCC laws, which permits me to send my thumbprint in blood as a valid signature. Okay? And I've now lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, here we go. Some more examples okay. of... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, so more, that's basically yeah, they're examples. calling you up, asking for more, um, asking for information, and, and they're calling you. That just does seem way out of... Uh, out of bounds there, but it, after receiving the deep pool. I think you're going to get that, and and and, and I'd certainly say, um, are you calling um, as the trustee and executor of the Sister V Trust or an administrator? And if they say no, well, I have, so I have, it was all self-explanatory. I have nothing else to say. If they say yes, no, I am calling as the trustee of the Sister V Trust, I say, fantastic. Have they been dissolved? Of course, they're not going to answer. And so, well, if you're not, you know, if they haven't been dissolved, then um, then I'll just send my bill to you then for the injury, ten million dollars, or whom whom should I send it? So I, I just think it's simply don't be distracted. I actually heard of another case where uh, someone presented their deed poll in court to the trustee, but unfortunately, it was prior to the knowledge that I shared today in recognising that the judge is the is both the trustee and the executor until they get you to become the executor on a sentence, so that the judge said, oh, well, I'll make copies of this. So, it, And they said, yes, and we'll go away and read it. So the opportunity was missed. Now, there's no way that that judge is going to come back to that court and the court case will sit there for a while and run away because they know that they just missed a bullet. Um, in all distractions and diversions they use, it will be ultimately to test your competence. So I guess in what we share tonight and what's in the positive law, it, it is merely about knowing um, your position, knowing what they're doing, the, the real power they're using, and, uh, and nailing them on it. So I hope I've answered that, Terry. I believe so. You are going to go into how to take care of the injury. Yeah, okay. Uh, a little bit further. Yeah, the injury, well, the injury component is really ultimately what you're seeking with a, with a deed poll. Now, before you go and try and collect on the injury, and the simplest way to collect on the injury is to send them a bill. They don't pay the bill, uh, go and issue a lien. Uh, but the bill is, is, is implied that you give notice that you are aware and you know the injury has taken place. Before you do that, you at least have to have spent some time in showing that you are no longer acting... Uh, without any sign of duress um, that you have started to, to give notice that you are acting and trading in your trust. So that's the only thing that is really the, the concern I have for anybody going straight away from saying, oh, they rejected my deed poll, I'm now going to try and lean them. Because got to remember, these are ignorant people. These are people that don't know everything about this system. And if you switch from one to the other overnight, then from their perspective, you're going to fall into the trap of, of unlawfully issuing agricultural liens and they may well come back at you. So, you know, accumulating evidence of injury is not a bad thing. But uh, there are going to be more tips in future talk shoes and more information that we share with people on, on how to keep logging of the, of the injury. But at this, at this particular moment, really knowledge for people 
um, is probably the most important thing. So, yeah, I, I, there, there are steps to take on the injury, but I think it's about accumulating a record at this point of each injury that they've done against you. All right? Great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, now I'll say our time to hold you for contempt in the courtroom. Uh, one of your, you had some good suggestions that, that you were going through just the other day. Did you have some thoughts you wanted to share with the, we had someone over here on the chat asking about what, what happens, what do you say when the judge says okay. I'm going to hold you? Well, okay, contempt can only occur if the judge has changed the form of the court from UCC to maritime canon law can only occur. In the first form of law, all the judge can do is fine you. It's all commercial in the first form. It's uniform commercial code, yeah? So the judge, in order to um, uh, charge you with contempt and try and put you in prison, has to either run away or say, uh, we're about to have a brief recess, or get the bailiff to say, we're about to have a brief, brief recess, you don't object and they return. If the bailiff or the judge says, we're about to have a brief recess, I would immediately say, I object to the change of the form of the court. I object to the change in the form of the court. Um, and they'll look at you and say, um, an adjournment? Absolutely, yes. But a recess, you are asking me to agree to the form of the court changing because that's the definition of recess see they're tricky everything's tricky with them they use the word recess they use the word adjourn adjourn means the form of the court remains and they can suspend the court for a day a month a year or 10 years but a recess is a, a, an offer to you that the court the form of the court changes now remember you know we come back in you say you miss it you let it happen you come back in the issue of contempt is not re-establishing your standing. That is, when the form of the court changes, it is a brand new court. And you're standing there thinking that you've already established that you are the trustee of a trust, that uh, you know they're the trustee, uh, you're there as the beneficiary, you know what they're doing, you think you've made it all on the record, they've run away, you've come back in, <clears throat> guess what? new form of law, you're now under canon and you're now under um, maritime law and unless you re-establish, Your Honour, uh, now that you've returned and the, and the form of the court has changed, I wish to reassert that I am trust recipient number 983-164-032-124-010-001 and uh, you are the trustee of the second sister KV uh, held by the Federal Reserve um, your Honour, whatever you want to say, long, whatever you want to reveal that you know the knowledge, right? Case dismissed. They can't charge you with contempt if you've established your competence. They can't. Contempt only works when you are effectively a thing, property, having no soul, because if, if you have established your competence, they must offer you in the second form what's called cure and maintenance, the laws of Oleron. Now, if it's, if it's the laws uh, of uh, Oleron being competent, then you, you can say, uh, you know, um, uh, what's, the, what's, the, um, uh, what's the cure? Now, if, if all of this happens and you're dealing, of course, with ignorant judges and rude judges and they're trustees, so they basically make it up as they go along and they say, um, uh, contempt, then your final recourse is to say, I do not consent, right? I do not consent as, as executor or beneficiary. I do not consent as executor or beneficiary. They cannot take you out of the court. They can't take you out of the court. They can't put you away because you have not accepted to be the executor, which means they can't complete the sentence. The sentence of actually taking you out of the court for contempt is conditional upon you either in your silence, accepting the contract, or your consent in signing the piece of paper which they force you to do either on entry to the, the holding cells or off to prison. But if in that court you subject to being the executor 
and, and beneficiary of that benefit, object to that benefit as either executor or beneficiary. The, the judge is not able to complete the sentence. They can't take you away. So competence is important. Competence in either establishing that you know the game or simply knowing your rights as a beneficiary is important. So I hope that answers for anyone that's listening. Okay? All right. Thank you, Frank. Uh, now this will lead into, uh, there's a question over here in the chat. Again, is there a time when you ever say sorry to the judge? And we had discussed the mistake. And could you answer that question and then go into well, when that is used and um, what term you need to use? Yeah, look, it, there is. The apology element you hear is actually uh, a thing called a uh, mistake, a mistake of fact. And if you want to know um, that, and I'm not going to read it out now because we'll sort of run over time, but I will refer you to the area to see what mistake is. And mistake is listed under Article 142 of Positive Law. Under Article 142, if you read mistake, that those canons will give you all that you need to know on why the apology works. But I would say this. Rushing to apologise and therefore use mistake of fact before you've, you've demonstrated to the judge that you know they're sitting there as you holding your legal title and you're the ghost. Unless you've shown some competence in that wider sense, I have heard many times that the judge just simply will ignore that principle of law as trustee and move on. It really only works once you've basically shaken the judge to realise that you know what's going on. And then when you offer a mistake, you're actually giving the judge a way out and they'll jump at it. All right? But mistake of fact only works for a non-violent um, uh, uh, error, which uh, is is considered, um, you know, you know, it can be considered that it can be reasonably argued. An unreasonable act like a murder clearly can't uh, be exonerated by saying I made a mistake. Okay. All right, and then is that in the first point of the court? Uh, under UCC or uh, you want to clarify uh, if it falls under UCC or Maritime? Um, mistake of fact actually applies to all three. An apology applies to all three. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the second form of court or the first form of court. But presumably you would only be, you know, you'd be trying to call up the the first form after you've established competence. But again, after you establish competence, the judge may want to run out, which means that you only have the opportunity to um, use mistake of fact when they return and you re-establish competence. Because once you've re-established competence and the judge realises that that little game of creating the new form didn't work, they would be looking for a way out. And then you say, you know, well, Your Honour, you know, there was a mistake of fact, da da da, and then that's up, oh, oh, okay, and then it offers some deal. So yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, if we if we have time for one more question, uh, I see that uh, Sagita or Sagita has um, yeah, requested a comment tonight. Thank you. Um, and, and you want to call it? Uh, that'll be the last question for tonight. Okay. Okay. Unless you have a little bit more time, I, it's up to you. Uh, Sagita, did you have a question? It's S A. Looks like S A D E T A or is it S A? Yeah. Okay. I'm not hearing anyone yet. Are you okay. muted? All right. Well, what we're going to do is look. If I didn't get to answer a question and, and you've just thought of one and you didn't have a chance to ask it, look, we 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 will have another call next week. Um, we went a bit over. I I I don't like it being too long. Otherwise, people don't have the chance to listen to the whole call. I really want to thank you, Terry, for being host. I want to thank everyone that asked questions and sharing knowledge tonight. I hope some of the insights that we went through earlier on about estate and Sester KV, um, and executor and trustees and exactly what they're doing in the court and the judges basically usurping us and standing there as, as claiming to be us, but all that helps people. And uh, look, it doesn't matter whether you send an objection, a concern, 
uh, everything, as you've probably seen from what we've shared tonight, not everything comes 